Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is your host, Presenter YJ, and welcome to today's webinar, Supremacy SDK version 1.1 new features. Uh, it will take about 30 minutes, but before we starting the webinar, I uh, will let you know some frequently asked questions about the Suprema webinar. So uh, some of our uh, uh, customers would ask about the, how can I find the webinar content? So you can find the presentation bar through the email or the support website, or there's the information in the uh, Prima SNS channels like Facebook, YouTube, or LinkedIn page. Also, some of you might be wondering how can I uh, inquire during the webinar session? Then uh, if you have any questions, you may just leave a question in the Q&A box. You can just roll over your mask, a mouse on the bottom of your screen, then three buttons as following will be coming out. And <clears throat> even during the webinar, one of our team members are waiting for your questions. Or uh, at the end of the uh, webinar, you can have a session that you can speak out your questions by raising your hand. So if you want to speak out, so please click the icon raise hand so that I could unmute your microphone. So as a summary, you can either type your questions through the Q&A box or you may simply speak out by raising your hand. When you speak through the uh, microphone, please introduce yourself and the question as well. Uh, regarding the content, first, I will remind you of some basic concepts of GSDK solutions, and second, uh, let's take a look for each new features of GSK version 1.1. And third, we will see some comparison points between GSDK versus Biostar 2 device SDK. Lastly, a brief look at the upcoming features of the next version of GSDK. One, GSDK version 1.0 overview. Basically, GSDK consists of device gateway on the gRPC server and gRPC client libraries. gRPC is an open source remote processor call system initially uh, developed at the Google in 2015. One of the reasons the concept of gRPC was applied is that it can support multiple languages. So let's assume uh, one of your application will send a command to uh, retrieve device information. Then your application one will send the command to the gRPC server. Then the command will be sent through the device SDK. Uh, I'm sorry, device gateway to the device directly. So you have one more step to send a command to the device uh, compared to the device SDK. So the concept is a little bit difficult, but in conclusion, you can just remember only two things. First, uh, in GSDK, Device gateway is the one that communicates directly with the device. And second, GSDK can support many uh, client languages such as Java, Python, or Go language by operating on the gRPC server. So to help understanding, uh, GSDK structure is coming out. So uh, basically, the device SDK 
sorry, <laughs> the device gateway is the one that communicates with the bar starter uh, directly. So your client applications can connect to it uh, using gRPC's client libraries. Currently, we are providing sample code in Java or C Sharp, uh, Go or Python and Node.js in the GitHub page. You can find those sample files. Two, GSDK version 1.1 new features. GSDK version 1.0 supported simple functions such as retrieving log or user configurations. So I believe there was no problems for the users who do use Prima devices only uh, without weekend devices or RS4A5 slave devices. But now uh, version 1.1 starts to support weekend or RS4A5 configurations as well. So you can attach uh, slave devices with GSDK as well. And the system main feature in the version 1.1, then uh, what, is what is the uh, master gateway? The master gateway is a scalable solution that you can handle multiple device gateways. This would increase the scalability and uh, increases the uh, maximum number of devices by like a hundred thousand. I must say that one of the biggest differences from the uh, device SDK is should be master gateway. So there are several main steps to uh, use a master gateway. So first, uh, you have to log in as a administrator to create each tenant. So uh, here's a new concept again. So what is tenant then? A tenant is a group that manages device gateway. So if you are not an uh, admin tenant, tenant cannot access other tenants. So for example, it would be useful if you have one master gateway and manage different client servers. After creating tenants, you can add device gateways to each tenant. And after all the device gateways are assigned to the tenant, uh, log in as a tenant to use or communicate with the master gateway. After completing those steps, the device gateways belonging to its tenant finally can communicate with the master gateway. But uh, as mentioned before, tenant does not have access to gateways that uh, do not belong to him. On the other hand, the default tenant administrator can access all tenants. Because of this kind of structure, using the master gateway requires much more certificate uh, management at each step. So GSDK uses SSL TLS X.509 certificates for secure communication. 
the certificates fulfill two different functions. First, they can assist with uh, authenticating and verifying the identity of a master gateway. And second, they enable the encryption of communication packets. So please note that the private keys should be not be shared with anyone. This is the table of comparison of the API usage uh, between the master gateway and device gateway. First, Connect API is an API that communicates directly with the device so only the device gateway can be used. On the other hand, connect master, login, tenant, and gateways are the APIs uh, dedicated to master gateway that manage uh, device gateway. And finally, we start to support C++ uh, client SDK and the sample code as well. So you can find it on the GitHub page. So then probably most of the people are wondering then uh, how is GSDK uh, version 1.1 is different from the uh, device SDK. So GSDK is based on gRPC. So it needs a client library and a gateway. On the other hand, device SDK can be introduced more easily by using .dll library. In addition, by supporting the master gateway, the GSDK can support up to 100,000 devices. It is very suitable for large uh, projects or sites. Uh, by default, both solutions support Windows and Linux system. However, if there is anyone who wants to use ARM Linux or Mac OS, can choose GSDK. GSDK provides uh, many language clients and sample code, but on the other hand, device SDK provides almost all uh, protocols, including uh, such as Lyft API or Zone API. Lastly, uh, let me check the plans of GSDK version 1.2. In the comparison with the device SDK and GSDK, I said that uh, it does not yet provide all the advanced features like the device SDK. So from the uh, GSDK version 1.2, it supports equivalent API, including Lyft API or Zone API provided by device SDK. But the current plan is before uh, October 2020. So today's webinar is done right now so if you guys have any questions please raise your hand oh uh, okay someone asked the question is the master gateway mandatory using the 1.1 uh, version no you can just use device sdk I mean, I'm sorry, I'm just, I just keep saying that device SDK, device gateway, you can just use device gateway only without the master gateway, even in the version 1.1. Any other questions? 
Okay, I see uh, Chris is saying that he has a problem with the Q&A button, but uh, you can just share your questions on the chatting room. I can answer to you. Okay, we have some time, so... Um, So Chris asked uh, if there is any plan for using GSDK for projects uh, or new Biostar platform comes. So uh, are you asking if there is any real project, ongoing project, uh, which is using GSDK? or new platform? Is that your question? Yes, we do. We do have some clients in Korea, and I guess someone in Poland is testing GSDK as well, and I heard someone in uh, Japan as well. So basically, I think more than three customers Although, as I mentioned, the GSDK doesn't support everything that uh, is provided by the device SDK. So you were just expecting this retrieving logs or user information, that kind of stuff. So you cannot uh, manage zones or, as a, you know, uh, before the version 1.1, we didn't support for the uh, RS4A5. So it is. Uh, maybe probably those customers who used uh, for their product JSDK would maybe use very basic functions. Why they need JSDK? Uh, because maybe, uh, I don't know exactly, but then maybe JSDK is much more. Uh, comfortable for the cloud-based uh, server because GSDK supports uh, very many client languages like Java or, you know, Go language. On the other hand, device SDK only supports uh, two different languages. So maybe some customers who would like to uh, deploy their uh, device SDK on the cloud server, maybe you would like to use GSDK since GSDK supports Java. I think so, yeah. I think mainly for cloud or IoT usage, or uh, if they want to use ARM Linux, because the device SDK doesn't support ARM Linux. So Chris wants uh, okay, Chris wants us to share real project architecture design for their reference. Uh, okay, I will uh, I will ask for the real design architecture to share with guys. No problem. Okay, do you guys have, have more questions? Anyone? Uh, I do have more questions. When do you expect to have a fully functional version of GSDK? Uh, it's gonna be 1.2 version before October in two months, I guess. Does that answer your question? Okay, thank you for attending the webinar and filling out the survey. Uh, you guys been awesome. So let me finish the webinar. I uh, will talk to you later.